and uh, they are rising to the occasion. Also, I really enjoyed working in uh, the Nisli. Mm. When I did the glass, blow the glass, uh, and it was incredible. And there's some people that are, I don't have it here, but uh, I, I do some bags and somehow Istanbul for the first time is becoming uh, a place where people produce stuff. And, uh, and I was, I was very impressed with, I mean, with the way it's going and with uh, the conversation, they, very good. And I recall you telling me that uh, yeah. you, you've been to Istanbul when I was in London and after you came back, you said, uh, I was in Istanbul and I said, ah, yes, it's a nice city, isn't it? You said, nice, only nice. All the great cities are divided by a river. Istanbul is divided by sea. That's what you told me. Yeah, no, it, it's it look very special. I don't have to tell. I don't have to tell you Istanbul, you, or Constantinople, or whatever. All the many names. I don't have to send it to sell it to you. You know better than me. Yeah. But uh, uh, incredible place, incredible place. Um, with, but, uh, but the piece lots... you made, uh, pardon, pardon. Say it again. Uh, the piece you made, uh, the last one for Pasha Bahçe. Yeah. That's so lovely. The Turkish traditional method, your interpretation of it. And uh, I saw it behind Yevgenia in your studio. Oh, that's so right. Uh, so she, has a, she has the prototype. Yeah, in the studio, yeah. right? But we'll see how it goes. I think three minutes. Wow. <laughs> so, who do you want me to be? Do you want me to be uh, Salvador Dali? Aha. Uh -huh. Or Salvador Dali? I think Salvador Dali is so nice. His mustache. Infinity, infinity mustache. Yes, infinity. Oh, Number eight. Oh, I can be Matisse if you want. Wow. Ah, Matisse is even better. That's personal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who is this? Mona Lisa. Right. And. Who is this? Einstein. Uh, Einstein. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and who is this? Ah. No. Groucho. Ah, ah Mark Groucho. <laughs> yes. This generation doesn't know anything about the Grouchos. They will learn. They, that's why I'm. <laughs> But Eran, Eran Kroino, he, he knew. Do they know about Marilyn? Yes, I think so. Marilyn. I know. Okay. But that's for mm. NHS, isn't it? It's, it's I think. For the, for the care, to raise money for the, the care, the carers. Huh? I know. Sorry? Adam uh, it's so lovely because, you know, we, we cannot see how people react and that must bring, you know, smile. It's so lovely. Yeah, that's why it's Very called simple. It's called, it's called smile. And this is, I made the logo, it's based on how you say smile in, in a sign language. Uh -huh. In America they uh -huh. do this, but in England they do this. <laughs> So it's uh, so that's why. So that is that is the logo that I did. Wow! Smile, I see. Who is this? Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, is there anyone who can answer that? Who painted this? 
Who? I'll give you a clue. His first name Pablo. <laughs> first name Pablo. No one, no one knew. Pablo. <laughs> He's not that famous. No. Okay, shall we start? Whenever you want. Yes, yes, okay. let's start. So, it's exactly <laughs> six, and there are okay. 75, more than 75 people waiting for us. Let's start. So, so I let's think, see. I think I think let's let's do it let's do it like this. Let's normally the questions are after the talk. Let's let's reverse it. Let's start with questions. Okay. Uh, any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Okay. What are you working on these days in the post epidemia world, and how did this epidemic? quarantine and curfews and everything affected your work in general? Did it affect or it, it didn't have any effect on you? I mean, like the first, the first thing is I work from home. I work, I'm very lucky because I can, I can look at the garden here and uh, I build in a, cons I live in a conservatory that I built myself. Our shipment, our... Sorry? Anyway, so I, I, and I don't know what day of the week it is. I don't know. I think it's between lunch and dinner, but I don't, I don't know. There's no, the urgency of the day is different. Uh, maybe I work more, maybe I spend more time uh, drawing and things than on normal days. Um, I came up and Lots of things were cancelled. Lots of exhibitions were cancelled, uh, or delayed, or postponed, or whatever, or became irrelevant. I don't know, but lots of. Uh, um, so, like, I can show you one thing, one thing that I did here. Right now, it was going to be the summer show, the summer exhibition of the Royal Academy. It's the main event of the Royal Academy every year, the summer show. And let me share the screen with you. Uh, hang on. Screen, screen, start broadcast. Tell me that you see my screen. Do you see my screen? Yes, we can see. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so like I'll show you. I'll show you what I did a few years ago at for the summer show at the Royal Academy. Every year, a different artist gets the courtyard, the front court. Like uh, this is Frank Stella. And this is uh, Barry Flanagan. This is Damian Hurst. This is Anish Kapoor. This is Jeff Koons. This is Anselm Kiefer. This is what I proposed. It's called the Spire. And it's spelled Spire with a Y in the middle because Spire, for those of you who don't know, it's the, the little thing on the top of the church uh, of church spire is like the conical thing. And also I did it with a Y because it has a camera on the top of it. <laughs> and you can see the screen sees what the sculpture sees. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, the idea is that uh, each of the joints is moving in a different speed, so it never repeats itself. It, it's different every time, and it can't copy itself because the speed of... So that, that was, don't believe this, this is just a render. It's not done yet. And this, this is like a, a diagram of it. And it, it's different every time, and it can't copy itself because the speed of 
why do I hear myself uh, echo? So if you can mute your things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is building it, building it like a Swiss clock. This is real. This is not a wonder. It's made it for people to stand still. It's going to be a storm. You can see the panel at the top of it. You see a little needle. You see how small I am? interpretation and the success of public art and I don't have to tell you you judge by how many people posted it on Instagram and it was a big hit on Instagram this piece so <laughs> uh, uh, um, so this year uh, what I wanted to do for the summer show is not the court not in the court let me find it. I wanted to take a Morgan car, which is a very English uh, legacy because it's done almost by hand, by enthusiasm. It's a folly. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take a Morgan car and to drop fabric on it. And and to do a sketch on the fabric, you know, that's like a little sketch, da -da -da, but to do, this is, this is like uh, my original sketch uh, that I later, uh, you know, this is simulations and, and the show of course didn't happen because of the pandemic, but the fabric, arrived to my house because my studio was closed and and it is amazing uh, it's jacquard by the way that the weaving uh, industry was the first industry to use computers uh, before the car industry you know like so this this amazing thing arrived. Now, what do I do with it? Because then I was very frustrated. But, uh, so I, I had to, and I have to tell you that in the Royal Academy, whoops, in the Royal Academy, it was going to be on the grill of the Royal Academy on the floor. It has R8, it could be Ron Arad, it could be Royal Academy. So I made the grill of the car uh, like that. So I had to build myself a car. This is where I'm sitting now, by the way. That's the so I just had to see what it looks like. So that's what it looks like. I mean, the whole, is there a car inside? Is there not? The, the whole thing is like um, about that drawing something doing sketch of something that's underneath it and you don't know if if it's underneath it or not Time. so okay so this is i had for a month i had i had the car in my in my conservatory uh, and then i decided to take it apart so let's see what's what was the car made of oh. <laughs> So, uh, you know, everything from a speaker and shelves that I made. I was very lucky to have a, a, a Scandinavian chair in the front. You see it, I'm, I'm taking it apart. One head on my video, on my telephone, and the other hand. 
they can eat the fun. And a techno sofa underneath, you can see uh, cushions. I think Gaetano Pesce would be very proud of the use I did of his selfie chair. Which, to my mind, is the best thing he's ever done. Anyway, and so on. So So, yeah, so this is it. This is the car. This is what it was going to, to look like at the Royal Academy, but unfortunately not. So when you, let me go, let me stop that. I come back to see you. Okay, so this is the, the concept here is covering something which is sketch of it. Um, actually, um, oops, let's see if you can see. This is a, a little A3 page that I printed it and dipped it in, in, in uh, water and glue, put it on a toy car, and oops, sorry about the virtual uh, thing, but then, anyway. So the distance from here to here is not, is not big. So I thought I'm covering something with a sketch of something, and now we see outside people cover the, covering the faces with masks. So I thought I will draw smiles and put smiles on. No, I'll put art because all the museums are closed. So I did, I did start something for charity. The easiest thing is to do the artwork. That's the easiest. The difficult thing is all the bureaucracy. It is now on Amazon, unfortunately only in England, but it's on Amazon. So all the boxes, you have all the bureaucracy that goes with something that all you want is to sell masks and to raise money for charity. But it's unbelievable the, uh, the amount of bureaucracy. So I, I, uh, I showed some of you some of them. So this is a, this is one, I mean, there's millions of them. Can I? Can you, can I hear you? I don't, I don't hear you if you say that. Anyway, there's Marilyn and there's Groucho Marx, which if you don't know who it is, find out. He's one of the greatest comedians. Oops, hang on. Come back, Groucho. And, uh, and and Dali, and I don't, I mean, I won't, don't want to show you all of them, but you can see it. One of my favorite, Einstein. Behave yourself, Einstein. Um, and so on. Mona Lisa. I always wanted to look like the Mona Lisa. Anyway, and so on, you can, uh, my favorite one is a black and white Matisse, and you can see it's also my virtual background here. Okay, so you ask me how did I, how did I using the pandemic? I mean that what that took a lot of the time. Uh, um, I can show you other stuff, but let's see if there's another question. Is there? Is any yeah. questions? No? 
Oh, yeah. Hi. Are uh, you going to ask a question? They, they are muted. That's why. But, uh, but they know they know how to not mute. Yes, they should. But, uh, may I ask you a question? Please. please. Uh, yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, to me, uh, I'm not so sure about the years, but Vivian Westwood and the punk movement. Right. On the one hand, and on the other hand, you and your rubber chairs, your concrete stereos, etc. Is there anything you would like to say about that? Because it's always, you know. Um, I'm, yes, yeah. Please. The thing is, that a lot of people. You're not the first. A lot of people try to to connect me to the punk uh, movement. Really? <laughs> but but the difference between me and punk, punk comes from people, not all of them, that comes from council estate, from deprived areas, and uh, people that had a lot to rebel against. And uh, I am embarrassed to say I come from a very good uh, uh, artistic family. Yes, you are. And I, I uh, I was a spoiled child. I wasn't. I was the deprived child. So, but yet, I had complete dislike for conventions, and I was that's from my own psychological reasons. And and for me to do, I mean, it. It was, uh, and also, I was in London, an outsider. People talk about how does the fact that you where you come from affected you. My answer is uh, the fact that I'm not from here, doesn't matter where I'm from, has a bigger effect on my work, I, a quality of an outsider. I had freedom uh, that other people didn't have because I'm not from here. I mean, I don't uh, belong to any class or anything, I'm, I'm a free agent. So, um, Yes, I mean, you mentioned, I'll go, I'll, I'll share the screen while I speak so you can. Uh, really? Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, the first piece I've ever done of furniture was the robot chair. And I studied architecture, I tried to work for another architect or for an architect. And it didn't take me very long to realize that I'm not made to work for other people and it's very difficult to work for other people after lunch. <laughs> yes, but, I, I uh, remember that. So I went into a, a, a graveyard of cars. I had to choose a, I had to choose uh, a car and I chose the Rover and this is, this is what I did. I think it's 81. And uh, I still have it upstairs, this one. This is my, uh, and that, that thing sucked me into the world of furniture. Uh, if someone told me a month, uh, a week before I did that, that I'll become a furniture designer, I would laugh at them. I would, but anyway, so I, for me, it referred more to, to, uh, to Marcel Duchamp ready-mades and to Picasso's Toro, which is the seat and thing. I didn't realize that Jean Prouvé did a copy of my chair about a few years before I was born. <laughs> what a bastard. Anyway, so anyway, it is like, it, it's a chair that there's only, it only appears in photograph that has, check it out, uh, has some, uh, something in common with this one, but he wasn't the reference. My reference was found object. And anyway, so that's that. And so, and uh, you mentioned you mentioned the concrete stereo, right? So I can I can 
I can go there as well, which is, which is uh, this, like a, I thought I'm doing an object of, of beauty. I didn't think I'm destructive, uh, but uh, you know, I'm showing electronic components uh, and concrete and pebbles. And, but when the Pompidou Center did a show to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Centre Pompidou, they invited, they, called, they had a show called the Nouvelle Tendance, the New Tendencies. And they made a mistake and they said, let's invite a ruinist. I didn't think I was a ruinist. Uh, and they invited me, I was the youngest participant in, the, uh, in that exhibition. And uh, anyway, but this is, this is it. Uh, but also it reflected what I could do at the time. And what, I mean, I didn't have uh, access to real industrial design. So I did what I could do myself. Later, I did for, uh, in 2003, 2002, I was asked by LG to, to do a new monitor. So what I did, I didn't know it, but I invented the iPad. So this is... We couldn't hear you. What I gave a whole lecture, my best lecture ever, and you couldn't hear me. <laughs> but uh, because of the music, we couldn't hear you. Uh, anyway, the... never mind. I just I didn't want I didn't plan to show it, but I'm, I'm just uh, saying. Uh, I mean, I'm not a methodical person. I jump from one thing to another, and people don't understand. We say, "How come did you do so much?" And I said, "Because I'm lazy." <laughs> so uh, I don't have I don't have a sort of I can, I can jump from working with uh, CNC and uh, the latest technology, and I also enjoy working with uh, with African craftsmen or with the glass blowers from the Nisli. So it is, I mean, it's all good. You know, I don't have to choose like uh, one discipline. 
And indeed, when I had my retro retrospective show at the Pompidou Center at the, at the MoMA, I called it no discipline. Um, but uh, anyway, any other question? Yes, please. How did you feel? Ah, <laughs> Michael Jackson. What about uh, the video that he, he uh, it's a funny story. I mean, I think there's more, more alarming stories about Michael Jackson than him using my furniture in his video without my permission. <laughs> uh, look, I can't complain. In retrospect, very good he did it. At the time, we tried to, to sue the, to sue Sony. I think it was with Sony and Delta. Um, and it was okay. It was good selection, it good taste he had to choose it. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Well, I can ask yeah. you a question. Please. Okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, to which extent you initiate your own projects? To which extent do you get some uh, project imposed or introduced by others? Just a second. I'm, I'm getting some. I'm getting spoiled here. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, with which? Look. Uh, sometimes people ask you, I mean, I didn't say, oh, I'll do a speaker for Gundi. No, they, they ask you, they commission it to you. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes you initiate, sometimes you think you have an idea, who should I give it to? Um, hmm, maybe Vitra, no, no, maybe Moroz or more suitable. Sometimes you initiate the project and you look for a home. Sometimes uh, you are approached. I mean, the last, the next exhibition that I'm going to do in LA started by being approached by by the Disney Corporation to do something for Mickey Mouse's 90th birthday. I don't know if you know, but when you work for Disney, they don't pay you, you pay them for the right <laughs> to use. So, uh, um, so they, in, they introduced me to a French company that also did a, a, a, a Star Wars table of, with Zah Hadid. And uh, so I started working for this company uh, uh, to do something for Mickey's 90th birthday. And unfortunately, the company didn't do very well and they went uh, bankrupt or bust or whatever. And the person that approached me uh, from the England, London Disney Corporation sadly passed away. So very sad. So I said, okay, so this project will not be a product. I, I'll claim it to make it an art piece. There's a difference between something you do for the industry or something you do in the studio. Uh, I mean, the, I can give a lecture just about, about that. Sometimes they go from one to the other. Uh, you know, they go from like the big easy chair started as a studio piece and then it became a morosa piece that is a poster that industrially made so i uh, i liked the project i did for, for mickey mouse and i knew i could not call it mickey mouse so, so i thought maybe i'll call it uh, topolino topolino is is Mickey Mouse in Italian. Thanks. So I uh, called my lawyer, my IP lawyer, my intellectual property lawyer, 
Um, do you see it now? Yes. You see the screen? Yes. Yes, Mickey Mouse. Okay, so I did, I mean, this is like generally the, the, the chair, but I, I did it uh, so I can paint it myself. I paint the mold and something that I love doing and I like, I'm saying I like using technology, artisan, but I also like doing things myself. Like, uh, so uh, let me see. Anyway, so I, call, I called my I called my lawyer and asked, can I call it to Polino? He said, look, strictly speaking, Yes, he said, strictly speaking, you can, but he said, in my profession, there's a saying, don't fuck with a mouse. <laughs> and I said, okay, that's a, that's a much better word, better name. So I call this, I call the whole series, don't fuck with a mouse. And uh, today it's been collected to go to LA. It was going to do before, hang on, let me show you. Uh, this is the DFWTF. The biggest problem with this, doing this, is that everything is beautiful. It's very difficult to do ugly thing with this. And, and, and you only see it when you take it off the mold because the first layer is the last layer and everything you do, it's mirror image. So, um, uh, to, to do, to do, to do. Let me see. Uh, so every every week I have to think. Every Friday I do. To think like, what what am I doing next? What am I doing? This is this one. It says fake news. If you can read it. And now, for the show in LA, after I enjoy doing the Morgan that I showed you, the car, and the masks. You ask me what am I doing on the pandemic? I wanted to do covers for paintings. So this is uh, a Mickey Mouse, a double Mickey by Andy Warhol. And you can see that it was stolen. The FBI is looking for blah, blah, blah. So I did a cover, by the way, it's, it's at four o'clock, it's, maybe it's here. Alma, did you get the fabric? Just a second. Did you forget to take the fabric? Huh? You have it? Can I see it? Okay, anyway. Um, so the idea here is to have it as if it's covering a painting that does not exist. Uh, and uh, all I'll do is the, the top part of the frame and it will be fixed to the wall and this will be, is it there? Is it not there? What it covers, it doesn't matter. The art is, is this. Anyway, so this is, this is the next show in, if everything goes well, in LA, in, uh, um, in the end of August. Anyway, so there's, there's all sorts of takes on it. The last one, and one of the last ones I did was on the 30, uh, on the 31st of January, which was meant to be the last day of England in the, uh, in the UK. I did this one that says, what now? 
it's a, it's a, it's the day that we left England, the UK left the EU. So I bought all the newspapers of the day, and and I thought, oh, this is this is a historic day. The world is changing. We didn't know that it's going to change a lot more with with the pandemic. So so I'm not. I'm send, sending today all the chairs to, to Los Angeles, but not this one. This one stays here. Anyway. So let us... Um, so, sometimes people ask you to do things, sometimes you initiate things. Sometimes, sometimes you see a new material or a new process and you think, what can I do with it? Sometimes you have an idea and you think, what material would be the best? Uh, what process? So it's not one or the other. It's a two-way thing, two-way between being commissioned and initiating, two-way between uh, being excited by a material or a process and and sometimes looking for the right material in the process. Um, but sometimes it's a combination, like, uh, I don't know. Um, they asked me to do a collection of vases for, for Benini in Murano. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, there's the commission. They asked me to do something and I, and I know like, they blow, I like the difference between what they do in Murano and what they do in Denizli. Different worlds, I love both. I love both, it's not one is better than the other. You do different things with, it's the same as that working with Italian artisans or African artisans. It's not that one is better, it's different and I can share it with you. So, um, this is, um, okay, so we'll go to, we'll go to here, we'll go to, to Venini. Let's, let's go to Venice, okay? Okay. Are you ready to go to Venice? Yes. Uh, Always. <laughs> okay. Because 
it is everyone is different and it's it's it's like um, I use masters so it's not a limited edition because uh, it's an unlimited series so that's a single and there's a double and there's the under and anyway so that's that's an ex answer to your question. I mean, I was commissioned to do something. Yeah. And this is the something I, I, I did. But let me now, while I'm here, uh, I'll go to, to this. This is like, a, actually I start earlier. I mean, I did, for Moroso, I did And this is my new piece of furniture. Anyway, I'll, I'll be, the thing is, it's a big piece of furniture. Trust to the heavy appearance of it. Look, it can also move like this. <laughs> and it is like an American okay, so port. You love that. Uh, and after that, A's. You say, and, uh, and that, is, that is the product, great, lovely. We can do this. R Ron, are you happy with the results? This is seriously good. I think it's the best piece I've ever seen in Ben Brown. Fine so, <laughs> this is a, a tree, 100% nature. And seed. It looks it's, comfortable. And it's a compliment. I don't know who it is, but it's a compliment. Let's show you a second. I carved a sentence by uh, William Morris that says, have nothing in your house that you do not know to be useful or believe to be beautiful. And then I, did, I don't like prescriptions, so I added all love to make it completely free from do what you want. But this is my handwriting and uh, This is my handwriting, and the more, and then it's carved by. I mean, this is the same same tree, but another piece. By a computerized woodpecker. <laughs> so. And yet, my you know it's it's not. The more sophisticated the machine is, the less machine-like the product is. So, when I show, I made this, my gallerist in Geneva, I wanted to show the video. And he says, no, the last thing I want is people to see this video. He wanted people to imagine me like Michelangelo with the hammer and the chisel doing it. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. So um, I was going to. What was going to show you? We want to show you. Um, but while you are looking, may I ask you another question? Yes. Just, just one, just one second. I'll show you the uh, the African. Yeah, you can ask me. Uh, the African uh, working, spending some time in in Dakar working with young African uh, artisan is pretty amazing. It's, it's like, uh, look at this guy, for example. Or look at Wait, wait, wait, wait. They made the tools. Look at this. They made the tools so they can do this. I can do anything like it. Yeah. 
We don't hear you well when the videos are running. Uh, okay, so I, I'll, I'll remember that. Okay. okay. Is this in Senegal? Sorry? Yes, it is in Senegal. Senegal, yeah, okay. Uh, Hang on, let me go back to... Now, okay. now the question is, while you are doing that, to which extent you uh, prepare drawings in advance and again, to which extent you change the design during the process while making it? Um, I, send, uh, I send the African artisans uh, drawings and they printed it one-to-one -one and they did it. But when I went there, we could go through it, I mean, and uh, change a little and, uh, but sometimes, uh, like we saw the piece in the Royal Academy, the drawings were made and this is it, you know, it was made just like the drawing. It's not, it depends on what it is. When I go to paint the Mickey Mouse chairs, I, until I do it that second, anything can happen. So sometimes you improvise, sometimes you follow the notes. It's not one or the other. Okay. That may be other people asking questions. So I uh, stop now. Okay. Um, uh, are there any questions? May, may I have a question? Uh, yes. Please. Anyone uh, may have. Um, it may be quite an ordinary question, but I'm uh, quite curious about it. What was your education like in the 70s? Did it play an important role uh, on you as an artist or designer? Uh, uh, I'm sure, yeah, I mean, look, we're all prepped by, by what was around us when we grew up. I talked before about being I don't know if I talked maybe before the, we started in, in the, my, of course the education, the education and your reaction to education, it's all, it's all, uh, it's all important. Uh, when I came to London in 73, I looked at art schools and I look at the architectural association, the AA, and those days it looked to me more like an art school should be than, than the art schools because no one was building anything in London. The product of architectural studies was drawings, airbrushes and things, performances. Uh, you know, when Cristo wrapped uh, the, uh, the mountain in, in Australia, it was all AA students that, that went and assisted him. Um, and it was a very pluralistic place, my school, the, the, the AA. Uh, so, and it's very difficult to be a rebel in a place that is pluralistic and, and, and progressive. It's a lot, it's lot easier to be a rebel in a place that uh, demands things. And when I uh, started, when I was the professor of the world, uh, College of Art, uh, I deliberately wanted to do the most pluralistic uh, platform ever. And I, I employed teachers that represented different uh, genres, different directions. And one thing we should never say is should. You should do this or you, should, or you shouldn't do that. Uh, luckily, it was a postgraduate course, so we didn't have the responsibility to give people the tools. Is something you hear about in, in, in lots of schools. We assume that people that are doing a second degree already have the tools. They already know what they want to do. They already know who they are and we'll just help them find them find what they are, not to become the new, I don't know, Philip Stark, but to become the new, the new Saltuk. I don't know. <laughs> that, was, that was the idea to, 
and we had a, a very good, we have a very good group of graduates that are doing very well. I used to scare the Royal College by saying that we take people to the course that are perfectly employable, two years with us, and they become unemployable, which I thought is a good thing. But anyway, some people that are unemployable employ 80 people now. I don't know, like, like Roland them. With uh, I don't know, is he from your time, Roland? And mm -hmm. the, the, the guy that invented the seaboard. Never mind. She the, the, the keyboard made of silicone that you can, you can play. Uh, it's not like a piano, it's all or nothing. You can ah. vibrate and things. So now he has a company with 80 people. He became unemployable, but he became a very good employer. So that's a good example. <laughs> uh, uh, there, there's a Thank question you. On, on chat screen. In the interview at the No Discipline exhibition, you were talking about a chair that you made and you said that it is as close as it, it gets to be like the sketch. You mentioned that you can't to that anymore and as a designer more is expected from you. Why is that? Isn't that what No Discipline is about? I'm saying that, uh, by the way, one of the things on the Morgan I showed you there, one of the things it said here, hmm. you have to believe me because you won't be able to see it. You can't fake a sketch. <laughs> you can't fake a sketch. You can't, uh, a sketch is a sketch. You can't uh, reproduce it and do it. Um, and you can't, fake your, a child's drawing. Children draw like children. And, and uh, let me go, let me go back to the screen share. Uh, I was talking about this chair. This is like one of my first attempt in doing furniture. And it is, it all started by making this, oops, this group of sketches. Unfortunately, I don't have the, this piece of paper, Vitra has it. Anyway, it's in a good place. So you can see this one here. So the idea was to take, to start beating steel and welding it to the doom till it becomes a chair and, and people around you sit on it. And uh, I need more support on the lower back. Okay, boom, boom, boom. And then what is comfortable, you freeze it, you weld the sides. And so this is, uh these are early early big easy that uh the the way you talked about you post threshold and saying why everything should be like refined and perfect why can't why can't it be like the sketch this is very much like the sketch it also represented the fact that i couldn't do better than that i did the best i could but i wasn't a good craftsman i'm not a craftsman so uh, later, same piece, but perfect, you know, like, like a piece of jewelry. So all you have to do is change the lyrics and say, why can't a piece of furniture be like, like jewelry? I couldn't go back and fake, uh, fake anything. So this is like early ones. And later it became industrial, like uh, with Morozo, rotation molding or upholstered. I mean, this is, this is a prototype that I did for a piece that later became, later became uh, something like that. But, and this, I think in my history, it is the most expensive piece 
of, I mean, in the secondary market that, of mine that was sold. Embarrassing to say how much obscene, but I couldn't fake it. I can't fake it. I can't go back and do, oh, I'll make more like this. No, I can't because this is, this is it. It was made and, and look at the blue here and look at, at the red here and, the, and it, is, it is what it is. I wish it was mine, but it's not. So there you go. So this is like a detail from it. This is, I mean, um, next question. Hello. Yes, uh, I think uh, on the chat screen uh, I'm reading uh, what you were, what were you inspired from while making Mudu chair? Mudu chair, the Mudu chair, the African Mudu. ones. Yes, Mudu. African. Uh, I actually uh, did the sketches when I was on holiday in the sun. And I thought, what would I like to have here on this deck? And I started drawing. And I liked the fact that it was made out of one line. And I liked the, uh, I didn't, I wanted to take as much of the, of the African colors that I could. So it was done by, uh, shall we do this? Shall we do that? Um, but, uh, I always, you know, like the most important tool that I have is still a pencil. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a light pen on a, on a, on a screen or, or, or a 6B pencil, but I think this, the Modu collection uh, is like a drawing. Like, uh, you know, you, it does, you can do, you can draw things by looking at them and uh, try to make it look like what you see, or you can draw things that don't exist, like as you imagine them. And that's what I did in the model collection and in many other things. And, and uh, the last question uh, is what makes a design great? And then maybe, uh, I don't know, what makes a design great? Uh, what, what makes a design great? Yes. Uh, uh, luck. No. Uh, what makes it depends. There's different ways to judge things. If depends what you want. If you want something to become the best selling piece ever, then then the figures of the sales will tell you how good the design is. If you make it the most uh, amazing and surprising or artistic, it depends what you, if you want to make it the most comfortable, then, then comfort will decide. If you make it the most, you want to make it the most surprising, then surprise. I can tell you that, that just a second, Lyle, can you take it? Okay, uh, it, my most ever uh, successful thing is the, the bookworm, this, which is, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear. Yes. When I when I showed it to Cartel, they didn't think it's going to be a best-selling object. They thought, ah, oh, we'll get lots of pictures in the in the magazines. But when you when you type bookworm on Google, uh, endless, you know, and it is so. This is nice because it's success, not because it's like all the other ones, it's because it's not like any other ones. So uh, I don't know if I'm answering the question, but by the way, this is the first, the first piece that I did. I have it upstairs here. Um, I needed to do a library. 
for myself what it is after I played with this material. and made stuff with it and the first one was something that no one asked me to do i just did it by the way this is a show i did with the late great ingo maurer that passed away last year uh, and so that led to to this you know and so where were we yes uh dear salto can i have can i have yep, a moment yeah. can i ask a question to ron okay yeah, please, please do so as we are in istanbul so i would like to learn about your uh, nude collection so uh, that you did for uh, design for Pasha Bahçe. So uh, what was the main idea, the basic idea? I, I saw, when I see to the, you know, to the uh, main thing, to the design, to the gloss, uh, I saw the simplicity. Uh, I see the simplicity and still, of course. What do you think about this? I mean, I... I enjoyed it because I did things, first of all, I enjoyed, as I said, the artisans. Also, I saw the, the production line. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. I mean, like the yeah. conveyor, amazing, amazing. I thought I knew everything, but I didn't. I go there, it's, it's, it's uh, I did some uh, videos there that I, I'm going to do something with it. Anyway. Very exciting. I recommend anyone that has a chance to go and see that. And then everything is that they break, the quality control, they take it and break it, goes in a conveyor belt, it goes underground. If you go underground, you've never seen anything like it. It is like if I had to do a film and I needed a, to find a scenery for hell, I can tell you where it is. It's amazing. You have like all sorts of. Yeah broken glass coming from the ceiling and it's all steaming and things and um, uh, so I mean for me to design is to do something that did not exist before it doesn't matter whether it's uh, Pachabache or it's Murano or it's yeah you have to look at what they can do so I was very excited by the, the red or white so you know, yeah like, um, was it a successful design? For me, yes, I, li I, I like yes. it. Yes. <laughs> was it, was it a successful design for them financially? I don't know, ask them, I don't know. <laughs> I, I for, don't me, know. for me, for me it then, is. <laughs> also, I have lots of stuff that is, uh, hopefully they'll, I think they were planning to take it to Milan this April, but mm. no Milan, so they have more time. Uh -huh. But uh, different ideas of stacking glass. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I enjoy doing it and I enjoy, I enjoy the work that you haven't seen yet. Thank you. Thank you. So and, uh, we thank you. Uh, Ron, uh, I think uh, we can finish here. I don't want you to, uh, you know, Tired. We, it's such a great pleasure for us to host yes, you. And thank you so much for that. Uh, Ron, uh, thanks to him, I spent uh, the best two years of my life at the Royal College of Art. And uh, to me, he's, uh, you know, he mentioned about William Morris and people like that. I think he is one of them. He is one of them, and uh, <laughs> can you see I'm going red? <laughs> and uh, also, you know the, the name, Sorry. the title of the. Can talk you see I'm going talk. red? Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, those are lovely masks, and uh, I think it's an answer to 
psychological and sociological problem that we all face today. And it's so lovely. And uh, also, I think Ron always talks about informations, just as uh, in the name of design products, his lovely creation. And he's a man of action. And at the same time, sometimes I feel when I purchase a piece of Ron, I say, Bravo. I'm buying a poster of a great artist right now, a 3D poster maybe. But uh, thank you so much for thank all. You. And, and thank uh, you so much for being here today. And uh, I'm, not here. I'm, not, I'm not there, too. I'm here. You're there, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, it's such a lovely coincidence. Uh, I, I also had the privilege uh, to take art history classes from our vice rector and dean of our faculty, Professor Dr. Hassan Bilan Kahraman. And I have my two professors here and the third one, Philip Zosar, my PhD advisor. And uh, what I are you doing? Dean, what, are you, what are you doing the PhD on? I, I, I've done that. What, what, dean, what was the subject? What was the subject? Ah. Uh, James Bond. <laughs> James Bond. Space and cinema. Yes. <laughs> yes. And representations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I just want to leave the world. Do you know? Do you know? Yes. Do you know? Do you know Ken Adams? Oh, yes, of course. But, but you didn't introduce <laughs> me. Please, please. <laughs> I admire him a lot. He he is yeah. my hero. Yeah. When it comes to you know, there was a there was a fantastic exhibition at the Design Museum recently of Stanley Kubrick. Ooh. Eh? Amazing, uh, but uh, you follow it. Maybe it will go somewhere somewhere else. Mm. But it's not James Bond, but it's cinema and thing. Also, who you should talk to is Christopher Christopher Frailing. Of course, and uh, Martin from the post office. He told me that uh, Sir. Frailing mentioned your work in a talk uh, about James Bond. I think it was the 50th or something anniversary of it. And he, he, he told me that Sir Christopher Frailing mentioned about my... Well, he is, is, uh, he's very good on, on films and, and, and design yeah. of films. And uh, thank you so much once again. You're welcome. And, uh, I just want to leave the uh, word uh, to Professor Dr. Hassan Bilan Kahraman. Uh, this, this was our first design talk series. And thank you so much uh, for uh, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, joining yeah. us on this lovely event. Yeah. If, you go, if you go to the studio Instagram, you see what we did on Saturday? Yes. On, online. We, did, we squashed a Mercedes online. So have a look. Well, I will. Ron Art Studio Instagram, go and... Uh, thank, thank you me. so much once again. And I, I leave the word to uh, Professor Dr. Okay. Karaman. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ron Arad. And uh, thank you very much, Salt Kuzimir. Actually, this is not a little talk uh, about the closing remarks of this lovely and wonderful uh, hour that we spent together. Of course, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We mm -hmm. are deeply grateful uh, to, to, to you. And uh, I also definitely thank to Saltuk Özemir because uh, as he just mentioned, this is the first of the international uh, design talk series. And it's of course a great honor and a privilege to have started with uh, such a great name. I will just touch two points. One, you talked about the luck and you said what makes a design great is sometimes luck. I, of course, agree and value what you have said uh, as it comes from uh, such a wonderful, wonderful designer. But I believe when I think about your designs, luck is the most, maybe the smallest part that makes your art great because uh, yes, you talked about the 
you know, warm, the book warm. Uh, but this is a great question. Why people admired that design so much? There is something behind that. So it goes beyond the luck. Luck is the only thing that triggers whatever behind that stays behind that. The second thing is, Saltuk was talking about the uh, information. And I translate this word into two words, like in information. I think what is very much interrelated with your designs is not the information that we gather from the other sources, but it is in fact the informations that you put into the designs. And I believe it is that or it is those informations that makes your art and design great. Thank you very much once again to be with us. We would like to host yeah. you in our campus at the Shuk University in the very near future. And uh, thank you very much for yeah. our friends who have contributed. It's not, it's not, nice, nice to see the Malevich book. Nice to see the Kazimir <laughs> Malevich book behind you. I, I have so many others. Uh, yeah. So but many that's others. The only some other the only book by Malevich. I'm a great fan of him. That's the only title I can read here. All okay. the rest you can see. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, let's give an end and let's clap Ron Arad what he has done up until now and for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. It meant a lot. Thank you. And thank you, Sultan. Thank you. My <laughs> pleasure. O zaman herkese güle güle <gülüyor> görüşmek dileğiyle. İyi akşamlar. Çok teşekkür sağlık. ederiz. Çok sağ teşekkür olun. ederiz. Sağ ol. Ayağınıza sağlık diyemiyorum. Görüntünüze sağlık. <gülüyor> sağ ol. Görüşmek güzel hocam. Güle güle. Görüşmek iyi akşamlar. İyi akşamlar. <gülüyor>